Hello and welcome to coverage of Grant <laughs> Pro Tour. Born of the Gods, Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Randy Bueller and Zach Hill. We've got three people in the booth here, four feature matches going, and we've got them on the quad split here. Quad split. Try not a little new thing. We're going to get a chance to look at multiple matches happening at the same time. We're going to try to keep an eye on them. I'm going to be kind of guiding our uh, our two analysts here to tell us what might or might not be going on as we go. Let's take a look in the upper right. McLaren versus Rivera. That game seems to be the most underway so far. Rivera looks like he's on either blue-white or blue, white, red. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, McLaren, I, th I think it looks like a blue-white-red mirror up there. We see mm -hmm. an Electrolyze essentially getting cycled. Not a whole lot of good targets. And basically what you want to do in this matchup is hit your land drops. So uh, an extra draw is going to allow you to do that. Now, in the upper left, we have Pardee versus Diekman. That's actually our feature match area. If we do jump down, that'll be the first one that we go to. And Diekman looks like he's checking out their Serum Visions. And uh, there's a wall of roots for party so pretty standard openers for those two decks. Uh, Dickman playing, yeah, does we, Dickman's we call it Tarma Twin. Does that have standard openers? Uh, <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> I, I think, you know, a one draw, yeah, I guess maybe a, a Tarma Goyf on that turn would be ideal. Lower left court quadrant of your screen, uh, screen, Shi Tian versus Frank Carson. Carson yep. is on Affinity. Indeed. Li Shi Tian is playing Blue Moon. the Blue Moon list that we've seen well, kind of appear here and really make yeah. a big stamp. Well, it's his team. I mean, uh -huh. the MTG Mint team from Southeast Asia, basically they all showed up playing Blue Moon. You know, there's eight of them, so they, they have been running around, and the deck did do pretty well. Blood Moon has really taken this field by surprise, I think. All right. Not, not a quick start from Karsten here. He's got a... a, a, a Vault Scourge there, and wow. not a whole lot else, but there could be more. Let's take a look at the lower yeah, right-hand yeah. quadrant. Chris Fennell versus Dominic Prozac. Now, Dominic looks like he's on mono red here. Was that a Rift Bolt that I saw? Oh, we have a burn deck. I, I haven't think seen we a might have a burn camera. deck on our hands here and now. Fennell we've seen before. He's clearly on Storm. He's and on that, Storm. That turn two Pyromancer's Ascension is exactly what he wanted to do. Yeah, that is a bump in the night there from Prozac. So, oh. yeah, full burn deck here, Zach. Yeah, Jasper Johnson, Epstein, Stephen Neal also on a very similar red-black burn deck. So, okay. Uh, yeah, so, this is, so this deck is still a thing even without Deathrite, which really kind of bumped it over the top. Yeah, a lot of people are playing white, too, for Boros Charm and right. Lightning Helix. Okay, so let's take a look back up at our upper right qua quadrant. There's McLaren versus Rivera, and I think we're going to see that board sort of build out with lands and yep. probably not do a whole lot for, for the foreseeable future. So yeah, the question is whether Rivera wants to start attacking with those colonnades or whether he needs to leave mana untapped for permission. That's well, right. One of the old school rules of control is you want to be, you never want to do anything. You yeah, want to be the right. last person to act. So right. that might be what we're seeing here. All right, so upper left corner, Sam Pardee versus Patrick Dickman. And Dickman's got a really innovative take on Splinter Twin. He yes. has green in there. Oh, yeah. He's got Tarmogoyf. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he innovated Splinter Twin once when he built the blue-red deck that he won Grand Prix Antwerp with. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, Everybody was winning with damage and lava mancers and just snap casting back lightning bolts, threatening the combo, but only doing it when forced to. Mm -hmm. Dickman said, oh, everybody's figured that out now. I have to innovate again. Right. So he went to Tarmogoyf, and he figures, you know how I'm going to beat Zoo? I'm going to block. Right. And then I'm going to attack, and <laughs> right. it's going to be awesome. Yeah, and he just has this nice I win, you know, the, the oops, I win backup exactly. plan of a combo deck. Exactly. There's some decks that don't interact with his hand or, or you know, pr put up any type of permission, so he can just be, feel free to try to craft that way. If not, he has some game in other directions, too. Well, yeah, or you just threaten to kill them with Scavenging Ooze and Tarmogoyf, mm -hmm. and when they finally use a removal spell, mm -hmm. you say, oops, end step flash creature, untap twin you, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. I love that, and I think this well, deck there, is there's... really cool. Speaking, Speaking of, of uh, end step flash creature, <laughs> there's a it? Pester Might. Let's see if he's got it. Party... Does Party have Abrupt Decay? Man? That is That's the his only way to interact. Party does play main deck Abrupt Decay, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's got two copies in his main deck. Yeah. All right, but Dickmon's going to kick things off with an attack <laughs> there. We're in the upper left quadrant, Party versus Dickmon here. And here's a land, though <clears throat> not going to go for it this yeah, turn regardless. Yeah, the attack not winning right here. Right. Decides not to take the risk. Is he under any immediate pressure? No. There's a Kitchen Finks that is going to be doing some work against Dickmon, but you can't figure that he's too worried about just a Kitchen Finks at this point. Yeah. Karsten got his uh, Steel Overseer spell snared. Ooh. Yeah, no, he's definitely been, has not come out of the gates as fast as he wanted to. That second Steel Overseer would have been nice. That would have been nice, but one of them is definitely enough to keep tons of pressure on uh, Li Shi Tian. And remember, like, at this point, 
<clears throat> playing something like a Blood Moon can buy him some time. It can shut off some of Carson's manlands, as we call them, Ink Moth, Blink Moth, those type of things. It turns out you can still cast artifacts, though, even if you have mountains. Exactly. <laughs> that, that said, one of the biggest <clears throat> assets of the Affinity deck is the eight creature lands. I mean, mm -hmm. it's one of the reasons to play it. It gives you tons of resilience. So yeah. shutting those off, extremely powerful. Absolutely. Now, the question is, does Carson have enough pressure, or can Li Shi Tian you know, nullify that pressure. We see a Tarmogoy from him here. A Tarmogoy from uh, 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 which point on the table? Who's got a Tarmogoy? Uh, sorry, there's a Snapcaster Mage, excuse me. <laughs> and it looks like he's played a, uh, what has he played? Oh, Serum Vision's there. So he's finishing up his scry. He's already drawn a card here. I mean, uh, you know, I understand how you can confuse <laughs> Snapcaster Mage and Tarmogoy. Yeah, they look so similar. <laughs> <laughs> Very solid two mana blue creatures. One just happens to be green. <laughs> yeah, that is the pair down matchup, by the way. Car <coughs> Carson is one of the X fours that's mm -hmm. hoping he can win win and have his tiebreakers improved by enough. So Shi Tian is the guy who got paired down against the next four. All right. Why don't we uh why don't we go into Pardee versus Deekmon here? I think we're gonna we're gonna zoom in here as you know, as the life totals aren't here, the game goes further, it gets a little harder for us to figure it out. So I like the idea here that we've gotten a feel for what's happening in the feature match area, but why don't we zoom in now on uh, Pardee and Deekmon and get some some clarity here as to exactly what's going on in this game. Now it looks like there's a Deceiver Exarch there for Deekmon who's at 13 life from Germany. Samuel Pardee, he's sitting at 19. And doesn't have a birthing pot on the table or anything like that yet. Yeah, he's been applying pressure with the kitchen finks. That's but, right. Uh, not a great draw from Party. Looks like his yeah. his uh, Exarch got killed, probably lightning bolted. Yeah, I think so. I mean, this is one of those matchups with Sorry, Pod Skyrock. where you you just kind of are playing like a mid range right. deck, and uh, you know Pod is a fine mid range deck, but it you're is. playing all these one of combo cards and silver bullets for a reason. And uh, just really not a whole lot of pressure right now that Kitchen Fink's being stopped by Deceiver Exarch. Yeah, Gavany Township uh, is in play, can turn it into a four power creature, which would be enough to beat up the uh, beat up the Exarch. I don't know if that's how Sam wants to spend his mana, though. I think oh, he'd no. rather spend it he on found this, something better. Uh, this birthing pod here. <laughs> Indeed. So Sam Party puts birthing pod on the stack, but we see that Patrick has oh a bunch of untapped mana here. You know what else Patrick has? What's Look that? at his hand. I see he has an Electrolyze, a Snapcaster Mage. And, and a, a splinter, splinter twin. twin. And a couple of splinter twins. Yeah, so he, uh, he can win the game on the spot if he goes for it and Pardee can't answer it. He's got the combo. No. He's, been, he's clearly been slow rolling it. Pardee, on the other hand, has both Court of Calling and Birthing Pod. Four mana plus three creatures to tap with Court of Calling. A lot of the time, that can spell game over, too. Okay. Yeah. So his ways of busting up the combo, it, there's Abrupt pa Decay. Is and Pontiff one of them? Yeah, he can, can he, well, if... It, de uh, it depends on which creature. Exactly. Orzhov Pontiff can break up the combo if, if uh, Dickman puts the Splinter Twin onto Pestermite, but he'll choose the Exarch. The Exarch is just a better target well, if it's available. Now, if he, he puts he it still on Exarch, survive, doesn't it still bust right? up the combo for the turn? Oh, because they're all zero power. Right, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, so Orzhov Pontiff gets the job done either way. At least for a turn, though, <laughs> letting him untapping do it all exactly. over again is... Yeah, if you, if, you, if you get a Pester Might, you kill the Splinter Twin. Mm -hmm. Now, I see Linvala, another way to disrupt the combo. Ah. Now the combo is gone. <coughs> yeah, Splinter Twin cannot win with Linvala in play. Right. Because even though the creatures themselves as printed don't have any activated abilities, Splinter Twin, it's not the enchantment that has the ability. It gives the creatures the activated ability. Right. Linvala turns off the effect of the enchantment. So now Patrick has another obstacle to fight through. Also, Linvala, 3-4 flying in the air does work. Right. right. I mean, we're still dealing with a deck capable of activating that Gavany Township and just beating down. Yeah, and the threat of Court of Calling is still extremely powerful here, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, one thing is... And against a lot of matchups, the Birthing Pod deck can gain infinite life wow. in the kitchen. Here's a Flame Slash, though, flame from Patrick slash. Sheikman. Main deck Flame Slash. And that is a fine target there. Linvala, Keeper of Silence. Now, you know Sam's what that is? going to react. Yeah, Court of Calling. Mm -hmm. That's Patrick Dickman knowing this format. That's right. Patrick Dickman saying, I'm going to play Flame Slash main deck in my deck so that I can kill things like Linvala. Now, right. this is another situation where Urzov Pontiff would be extremely good using it not on your opponents, but on your creatures to, to give, give Linvala plus one, plus one. exactly a ah. fifth point of toughness. Well, how much is he courting for? Is it three? It's two. Uh, it's you can two only court for two. Actually, but I guess he could have done Spellskite is also going to get the job done. Spellskite as well is just going to... Take one for the team. Yep, take one for the team. Flame Slash takes down Spellskite, but leaves Linvala, key creature there on the battlefield. Yeah. And Patrick still has to find a way to fight through that, yeah, too. Yeah, those two creatures 
are the plan for Pod against uh, Splinter Twin. You want right. Linvala Spellskite. Mm -hmm. If you've got Linvala Spellskite, they basically can't win. They mm -hmm. have to slog through the Spellkite, then take out Linvala. I do Court of Calling really, really important in that position as well as you can get Spellskite at instant speed. Yeah, that was nice. And Court of Calling really powerful with Ra Wall of Roots specifically because mm -hmm. it effectively acts as two mana. I agree with you guys, though, about the power of Flame Slash. So much of modern revolves around the number of three toughness. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the reasons Tarmogoyf is good, a lot of time it comes down as a three, four, and survives Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. Flame Slash, a lot of the time, kind oh, of geez. circumvents that. I see. That's great. And here's... All right, so here we go. <laughs> Snapcaster Mage on Flame Slash because once wasn't enough, but second is, and it leaves Patrick Dickman with... I believe two Splinter Twins in his hand, and he's ready yeah. to go. He's ready Sam to go Sam Pardee, next turn. it's back on you, buddy. You have to prevent this from happening. He has to figure that, uh, that Patrick has at least one Splinter Twin in yes. his hand. What has he got left, though? Well, he can, He's got a birthing pod. He can right. Revelark back Spellskite if he evokes Revelark, and uh, that prevents Splinter Twin from being cast. Because the Splinter Twin would get would have to get placed onto the Spellskite. Exactly. <sighs> Okay, so there. Well, he's gonna he's potted Wall of Roots. <coughs> so here it he's is. He's gonna eternal witness the spell sky. Same oh, okay. basic idea. Right. He found a so better line for getting it out of the graveyard. Totally. Wow. Yeah. It, Party can now play the spell sky, which he he knows. Just the spell sky is enough to disrupt the combo because the Splinter Twin. You can grab the Splinter Twin. Now, interestingly, here Sam is down to seven. Yeah, I was noticing that. He's been pretty aggressive with the birthing pod activations, and uh, he doesn't have any blue mana available here for the spell sky. So if he does want to activate it, he's going to have to pay two uh, life again, yeah. which down will be the five. second time this game he's done it. That's a lot of Phyrexian mana being spent, and he's got to be careful because you know Pester might beating down still gets the job done. Well, yeah, what he does. You're exactly right. He doesn't have any flying creatures to actually block the. Two one. Right. He does have Kitchen Finks and Scavenging Ooze in his hand, both of which can gain him life. Okay. He just needs the time to be able to do that. And I think maybe one of the reasons he went for the line that he did was to be able to get uh, Finks on the battlefield, not only to gain some life, mm -hmm. but to apply some pressure if he's able to remove the uh, Deceiver XR. Okay. And he does just that. So back up to nine for Sam Party, passes the turn back. And Patrick is looking at his attacks here. Mm -hmm. He's going to battle with both. Looks like Waller Roots is going to jump in front of the Deceiver Exarch, and Sam's going to take the two. Excuse me, the Snapcaster, and uh, Sam's going to take the two. There's a nice interaction here with Birthing Pod, Kitchen Finks, and Gavany Township. You can kind of get the minus one, minus one counter off your Finks and kind mm -hmm. of keep sacking it as long as you want to get fours. That's right. And now, not Sam Party a has a, a pretty yeah. nice rip there. He, he drew Abrupt Decay off the top of his deck. Mm. And that can give him some extra insurance. Whoa, and here's the Orzov Pontiff, though, to take down both Snapcaster and Pestermite. So Sam building up his board. And as we've, meant, as we've mentioned throughout the course of the, the weekend here, you know, the Birthing Pod deck, it always... Look at all those creatures. And he's got a Gavany <laughs> Township. Like, this game could just end in a couple of turns uh, from Sam Party just turning the tables on, on Patrick Dickmon and just start attacking. Well, I've just been so impressed. I mean, people talk about sometimes modern's pretty high variance. The matchups matter a lot. Somehow uh, it's not high variance yeah. when Sam Party is playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you're tutoring multiple times a turn, it's, uh, it's incredible how finely tuned this kind of deck is. Well, it looks like uh, Frank Karsten picked up game one there over uh, Li Shi Tian. All right, there's a court of calling off the top for Sam Party. He's lining up his attack, just going to ship in there with the old Kitchen Finks. And it looks yeah, like uh, Patrick took it. Yeah, Exarch doesn't want to block, because if it blocks, then Pod on Pontiff can give it minus one, minus one. Mm. All right, well, he has to kill it you twice. To, It'll yeah, haunt yeah, somebody, haunt and then you kill the other else. thing. And, but, I mean, he's clearly living in fear of losing his Exarch to, uh, yeah, to the Yeah, exactly. Pontiff. And, and there, uh, I think at that so point, had he used Gavany Township? I, oh, maybe yeah, that. Gavany Township was, didn't even need the Pontiff. It's just the Township. You're That's right. right. So, so Kitchen Finks gets sacked to the pod. That gets a Ranger of Eos. That gets a Viscera Seer and a Birds of Paradise here. And uh, party ships the turn. I mean, it's unbelievable just how much the Birthing Pod deck can put onto the battlefield in a relatively short amount of time. I mean, Birthing Pod, just an extraordinarily powerful card. It really is. In and of itself. I think it's the most powerful card in modern. Yeah, I, I think that's a very plausible argument. How many cards does that leave you with? <laughs> and on the other side of the table, we have two one flying creatures. Oh, what was that? The, uh, the Spellskite took the tap ability. Yeah, he took the tap ability. He took the tap ability, and uh, Sam Party 
paid two life to redirect it to Spellskite, drew his card for the turn. Well, you see Party, I mean, this, this game has gone on for a long time, and Party just still full of options. He I certainly mean, is. A grip of four basically totally different cards. All right, so here goes Orzhov Pontiff. It's going to get sacked. It's now haunting Sorry? the Ranger of Eos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's going to get a four drop here. And there it is, Murderous Red Cap. Two damage to your Pestermite. That puts that in the bin. Yeah. And it's just, he's just clearing Sam a pass. Does he have lethal yet? Uh, I Three think he is five. I don't think he has enough mana to activate the township. <coughs> he does D not. He does have Viscerous here in his hand from Ranger of Eos, correct? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, and so he's going to he play can it, sack here. it He can sack Ranger to use Pontiff's plus one ability. I don't know if that actually gets him ahead. I think uh, yeah. it probably doesn't. Good point, though, Zach. That, yeah, yeah. that is definitely a possibility here. He's going to pass a turn, so it looks like he's lining up the kill <laughs> next turn. And, and he is setting up so that uh, if somehow Spellskite died, he could still sack Ranger to Pontiff for a turn, effectively oh, fogging. Fog the, there Just you go. the worst case scenario, yeah. Wow. And just here's love a bird. the way Sam Party has played this game. Yeah, Sam Party played too. this game. And this, like is gonna be, this is going to be Malira right here. Yep. So now, there he's she now is. he can just combo kill. And, and now and he, he can combo kill or, or attack damage. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> what's right, your, what's your flavor, Sam Party? So. Yeah, <laughs> and it, his it, opponent has his combo, but Sam has kept it at bay the whole time. This is unbelievable mm -hmm. magic. I mean, this is truly incredible. Yeah, We've seen two infinite combos <laughs> basically. That's kind right. Of wow. for position. Yeah, Sam passed Absolute the turn, clinic. said, during your upkeep, do a million billion to you. And he said, okay, let's go to game two. So Sam Party takes the first one there. Wow. That was awesome. Effectively just, playing I just like for watching top people. eight. Yeah. <laughs> watching people play Magic that well is, is fun. And I, I mean, this is one of those times, too, where you just realize how familiar these players are with this format. Because, like, we get to see both their hands, but like, they don't. <laughs> right. So they're having to just anticipate all of these possibilities. Yeah. Sam Party really is a true master with the deck. It's insane watching him. Let's take a look over at uh, Sean McLaren versus uh, Tim Rivera. This was the blue-white-red mirrors, what we assumed it was, although I do see a Deceiver Exarch up in the upper right hand oh, there for Rivera. So it could be twin with white. Yeah, it looks like it's blue-white-red blue versus twin. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a blue-white-red twin deck. It has Wall of Omens, Snapcaster Mage, Restoration Angel, so it can play kind of a value uh, right. game. And, and the resto kiki Jiki combo is just as good as Splinter Twin. Exactly. All right, so it looks like Vendillion Click has just been resolved for McLaren, and it's going to reveal double uh, Restoration Angel. I believe a Kiki Jiki, a yeah, Path to so. Exile, and card, like maybe a Snapcaster Mage there in the middle. There's actually yeah, or an XR. a lot of similarities Probably between mage. this deck and Dickmon's in that it lets you just play kind of a value game with a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. You see Bolt and Helix in the deck, so clearly mm -hmm. it's, you know, there are plenty of games that it plays fair. Yep. But then Splinter Twin, you know, it can gate, just draw you a card every turn on Wall of Omens, or it could just kill them with Deceiver Exarch, Restoration Angel, both of which survive Lightning Bolt, one of the premier removal spells in the format. All right, so Snapcaster Mage, mage gets shipped to the bottom, and here's a draw like step for Rivera. And here's a Sphinx's Revelation Man. for the full wow. amount. One, two, three. Looks like it's six here. <laughs> you don't see that in modern every day, but no. he's cleared the way to make this happen. And he's trying to... Yeah, that resolves. All right, so <laughs> the, the reluctant, yeah, that resolves from Tim Rivera. I suppose I wouldn't be too happy either. I see he has five cards pulled there. Path of Exiling after the Revelation resolves, I guess, for, you know, okay, we don't want you to have one fewer land in your deck for right. those five draws. Mm -hmm. But, you yeah, he's going to Path to Exile there. And I don't think that uh, McLaren even searched. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's he's already, he, knows. Kind of basic he, he knows they're gone. <laughs> I'm, I've got to say, I mean, just geeking out over Rivera's list, I love this list. Four Celestial Colonnade, I mean, fully capable of just playing like a mm -hmm. solid blue like white, a blue -white red, red flash deck, deck, which is exactly. why we thought that's what it yeah. was when we saw it the first time. <laughs> right. On the quad split. The quad split. Hashtag quad <laughs> split. Sounds like an exercise. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed it, to it split kind of, muscles. <laughs> it was kind of an exercise, though. <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you don't see a lot of games in modern where both sides have this many lands on the table, both because of the matchups and because of Tectonic Edge. But it doesn't seem yeah, you know who wins when both decks have this many lands, though. Who's the that? one with Sphinx's Revelation. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
No, that's absolutely true. I, I think the question is just how is he going to end the game now? You don't really want to be tapping five mana a turn to attack with a colonnade uh, right. if you're going to get in a counter war. And here's how McLaren tends to finish off the game from his side. Lightning Helix U. He's also got a Johnny Vengeance. He's got Lightning Bolt. He has uh, oh, yeah. Snapcaster Mages and Electrolyzes all to go to the face. And, of course, he has his own Celestial Colonnades as well as he's just thrown two Lightning Helixes at his, at his opponent's uh, life total here. I've, uh, everything you're saying is totally valid, but I'm, deck is playing four remand on the other side of the table. It's my favorite magic card of all time. <laughs> all I want to see, countering spells and drawing cards. I mean, but. Here's that's a Snapcaster Mage now for, for Sean McLaren. He's and he's going to target a Lightning Helix and throw that at his... He's doing this while the way is clear, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he's, he's seen his hand. He resolved the revelation. No, I think it's Rivera's end step. McLaren discarded the Johnny Vengeances. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then shifted I'm just turn saying, back. He, he had, he, he's had one fresh draw step. Well, two. He got one off the click, and then he got his next turn. Right. There you ah. go. Yes. Is that even more burn spells? I mean, it's amazing yeah. for a control deck how quickly it can put the game away. It's yeah. a lot of damage. Yeah, besides Path to Exile, it's it's really centered its its uh, removal around spells that can also yeah, go to the face. Angel's going to get pathed. Yeah, Resto Angel comes in, gets Path. It's gonna, it was going to no try to jump in the you. way of the Snapcaster Mage there. Yeah. All right, a uh, quick update from uh, our D table there. It is Chris Finnell up game one over Dominic Prozek from the Czech Republic. Both of those players sitting on 11 match wins so far. So that's the Storm player winning? That's correct. Chris Finnell's on Storm. He played against Mono Red as well. We, well, not Mono Red, but the Burn deck. Out, right? like, yeah, now I'm thinking of what you could do and what I can do. Well, I can cast all these. <laughs> I think he's trying to say, hey, you want to concede. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you may, I mean, Rivera's like, no, I'm going to make you kill me. Well, Rivera said, I'm, I'm thinking about what I can do based on what you just showed me. And McLaren said, well, I can cast all these. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an option. Remand on the Deceiver Exarch. All right, and that is going to do it. Crypta Command. You got me. And he says, you got me. <laughs> okay, so Sean McLaren picks up game one there. So he is well on his way. Sean McLaren from Canada versus Tim Rivera from the United States. Now Sean's on 34 points here. Right, so he, he kind of has some wiggle room here. He basically has a loss to give. Has he to does? win one of the next two. Okay. If he lost here, he would then be in a win and in situation next round. All right. All right, well, we're going to send you guys to uh, some messages really quickly, and we're going to come back, and we're going to have more action from you here from Valencia. Outfit your magic collection with the newest Born of the Gods accessories from Ultra Pro. You can see the full array of card sleeves, deck boxes, playmats, and portfolios of your favorite magic artwork at ultrapro.com. Head to your local game store on March 1st and 2nd for the Born of the Gods game day. Play in a fun standard tournament and take the next step on the hero's path by battling the Horde. Visit wizards.com slash magic game day for more information. And welcome back to coverage of Pro Tour Born of the Gods. Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Randy Bueller and Zach Hill. And we're looking at Frank Karsten here. Karsten's up a game? Is that he, right? This he, is game two? Correct. He's up a game versus uh, Li Shi Tian playing the Blue Moon list, which is uh, basically, you, you described it as next level blue. Yeah. But I mean, it's basically like uh, Blue, Blood Moon is a card that prevents your opponent from casting most of their spells. So you're mm -hmm. basically a draw-go deck that at some point in the game locks out like half your opponent's cards mm -hmm. and wins with Vidalian Click or Vettelkin Shackles or basically Master of Waves, whatever you can put together. But Batter Skull. Batter Skull, precisely. It, it, but it's a very old-school control deck at heart. I know you love these kind of lists, Zach. Well, I mean, I can't say anything about old school control decks <laughs> sitting next to Randy Bueller. Sure. But, uh, but you I, love them. I do love them. Yeah. That is true. I'd I, love them more if they had one rainbow of free. But <laughs> funny. I'm not sure I've ever passed without and Shackles in a cube draft. <laughs> <laughs> just based on principle alone. <laughs> it's actually a law of physics. Right. You just you can't resist. You know it's in Modern Masters too, right? Yeah. You just slam it. New art even. All right. So... A Steel Overseer for Frank Carson looks like it's going to be the recipient of a lightning bolt potentially here. But we are ready to go back to our main feature match here. Sam Pardee, who just won game one versus Patrick Dickman. And uh, 
This is going to be a big decider here. I mean, these oh, matches yeah. are, we don't have that many more games to play here in Valencia before we cut to a top eight. So every single one of these, super, super important. Yeah, I, I, I kind of was rooting for both of these guys to make top eight. I mean, they're both such modern specialists. Yes. Yeah. I feel like we don't have a lot of the top 25 ranked players in contention for this top eight, but we do have a lot of people who really specialize in modern. Yeah, that's These been... guys have both won Grand Prix. They yeah. both play a ton yeah, of this format. If he gets to write them down, you should at least you should get to write them down twice. All right, let's, let's take a look at Sam Party's hand here. He's getting Gitaxian probed, and he's got Birthing Pod, Hierarch. Noble Hierarch. <laughs> that looks like a slaughter pact in the middle, and then it's... Can't quite see what that other card is. Uh, we'll, we'll get that up on the card picker uh, pretty quickly here for you as well. According to this, we see a Noble Hierarch Slaughter Pack, Thought Seize, Birthing thought Pod, seize. and some Verdant Catacombs. Okay, so that was a Thought Seize. Yeah, I mean, the, the, to say what you are saying earlier, we don't have a lot of the top 25, but like most of the people that are in contention are like players people know and players people respect. I mean, right. it's a really uh, kind of awesome combination of people that really know the format. It looks like uh, Patrick's having a tough time there. This is a high, high stress situation down in the yeah. uh, feature match area. You know, I did a couple of rounds as uh, the, the floor manager down there, and uh, it's, it's hard to convey the intensity that, that sure. exists down there, especially when we get to this point. As you can see, Patrick, you can see it on his face. Yeah. You know, he's, he's under an incredible amount of stress right now. He does yeah. not want to lose this. You know, picking up a top eight here. He's 25 years old from Germany with 20 pro points. And as we mentioned before, he's got a, a Grand Prix top eight and, and in fact, a victory. Yeah, right. Not in a, modern. Right. That's not a lot of pro tour experience. Really a magic online player, primarily. Mm -hmm. One of the things about casting a card like a taxi and probe on turn one, especially <laughs> when you're already in a high stress situation, is now you've just obligated yourself to process all of that information. <laughs> now you have to play perfectly. <laughs> you, can't, you can't be like, well, I didn't know he had yeah. it. <laughs> now he did, he's played a second land. What are we going to see here from him? Are we going to see a Tarmogoyf? Yeah, I mean, I would is have he to leave think the so. mana up. I don't think he puts the land into play untapped if he's not going to cast a card this turn. And I think getting a Goyf on the table and starting to pressure your opponent's just really important. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that he could fear here, though, is the turn the turn two birthing pot here from Sam Pardia. You know, if he had some type of permission spell or something along those lines. But you, you, he's in there, Goyf on the battlefield. Here's a, here's his second land for Sam Pardia. This does give him the requisite mana. And we see oh, Dickman's willing to tap out for it because he's got Ancient Grudge in his hand. Yeah, exactly. He actually mm -hmm. kind of wants him to cast a Birthing Pod if he can't activate it because that's some life that gets ticked off party's life total. Let's Dickmon cast Ancient Grudge, which puts an artifact in the graveyard. And an instant. And an instant. And there's exactly. already a sorcery in a land, so right. wow. Yeah, party and there goes it is. For us. Falls right into it. So wonder, Patrick Dickman has, it has a really nice little situation set up for himself here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Birthing Pod was there when the Gitaxian Probe happened, right? Right. So Dickman knew it was there, but Party also knew that Dickman knew it was there. Mm -hmm. I don't think Party had anything else to do. He kind of had to go for it there. It's not like he can play around the Ancient Grudge super well. Right, exactly. He could have waited a turn so that he'd be guaranteed one activation. I, I think maybe one of the things, like, I don't know that it's 100% correct, to, or not correct or incorrect, but I know that everybody doesn't necessarily bring an Ancient Grudge against Pod yeah. right. because a lot of the time they've gotten value out of it by the time they've used it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to sit with a reactive card in your hand. Right. So he may not have even been expecting the Ancient Grudge. That's right. Now, so, so but Patrick Dickmont did take that exact line, attacks for four here with his Tarmogoyf, drops Sam Party down to 12 and looks to be in good position. He has one untapped mana. It is green, so he can grudge away something else if that, if that were to happen here. Sam, of course, perfectly aware of that, though. All right, looks like uh, Dominic Prozek has tied up his match versus Chris Finnell. Dominic's on the burn deck versus Chris Finnell and his Storm. So let's take a look at Patrick's hand here. It looks like he has a combust, a second Ancient Grudge. So that's overkill for him there. But two Tarmogoyfs, one of them going to hit the bin. That does add a creature so that his other Tarmogoyf gets big, and he still has another one to play. So we know what the plan is for, for Patrick <laughs> Digmon here. He is going to make Goyfs, and he is going to attack with them and see if it's enough. I mean, it's kind of unbelievable to me that Digmon's playing like a combo control deck <laughs> and Party is at nine on the third turn yeah. of the game. Interestingly here, Sam Party also getting basics. He must fear Blood Moon. Is that? Well, he wanted to get it untapped. He didn't want to pay the two life. Okay, I mean, he, he's got Forest Forest That's because he's been cracking. Well. It's because he's been cracking his fetches on his main phase in order to get the mana that turn. Right, it, right. He, he doesn't, doesn't want to take to another life, two, right, right when, he's, when he's under such pressure already. All right, so... 
I think Tarmogoyf just got eaten by a scavenging news. Huh. Is that what happened? Yes. He's shrinking the Tarmogoyf. All right, so that wow. does shrink the one that's on the battlefield and threatens to really put it down to, to nothing in short order here. Yeah, that's actually a really excellent uh, swing for Sam Party because as the scavenging news gets bigger, Tarmogoyf gets smaller, and it also helps him uh, recoup some of the life that he's lost right here. And, you know, Dickmon at 15, not a super low life total. Oh, oh so brutal for Lightning Sam Party. Bolt Lightning Bolt time. takes down. And that's the one window he had realistically right. there. And he finds it and kills it. You can see Party looked pretty disappointed. Well, he cleared a path with Thoughtseize. Mm -hmm. Like, he yeah. paid two life. <laughs> yeah. He cast the Thoughtseize. The coast was clear. He scavenging oozed. I mean, he would have taken any oh. scavenging ooze answer with the Thoughtseize and over overtaking that He Tarmogoyf. interestingly of took course. a Tarmogoyf one draw with phase. It. Well, there was no Lightning there Bolt wasn't there. There was Lightning Bolt. Yeah, he ripped the Lightning Bolt right off the top. And, uh, yeah, and, and he took a Tarmogoyf thinking that, okay, maybe I'll stop some yeah, of this pressure. Wow. Wow. Sam, Sam's line was excellent there, but... Couldn't do anything about the top deck lightning bolt. Now, if, if is that a slaughter pact in party's hand, but no Not black anymore. mana to play for? Oh, okay, he does have. Okay, he just cast it. All right. Yeah, and he's got a basic swamp. In okay, I, I couldn't quite tell. I was like, oh man, we've had some crazy pact situations. We have this had some crazy pact situations. <laughs> True story. Maybe get a dice on top of that library. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, party at six, the Tarmogoyf still. I mean, yeah, that's a beautiful thing about this deck. I mean, you know, it's a line. Okay, you've got your combo pieces. You're doing all this stuff. Yep. But uh, sometimes you just turn creature sideways, and yeah. that doesn't. So how big is this Tarmogoyf right now? There's a Birds of Paradise five. in the yard. Probably it's four or five, Creature, right? artifact, artifact land. land. Yeah, I think five. Okay. And Samuel Party is sitting. At six life, a precarious life total. He is up a game here. Yeah. He does have a game to give, but oh, he would yeah. love to finish this thing off. Yeah, he's obliged to pay for Pact on his next turn. Mm -hmm. All right, so he's going to attack with Tarmogoyf. He does allow Party to chump block, which he does not do, because I know that Patrick Dickman has in his hand a Pester Did he just forget to pay for Pact? Uh, I think so. He I, just forgot to pay for I Pact. We've had two pay for packed losses, and he top deck birthing pod. Um, oh, oh, he already, already paid? paid for. Okay. Okay, these guys are playing faster than I can keep up with. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> when did he pay for pack? What I, was I, I doing? Uh, well, whatever. I guess I, I assume last turn. <laughs> Fair. All right. So let's take a look at what the, the board state is now. Though there's a birthing pod that just sacked away the noble hierarch. In response, Dickmon looks like he has now cast Pestermite. Do you think you're going to attack next turn? With totally. Creatures? Totally going to attack. <laughs> 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 All right. So Sam Party, feeling out the water, says, are you planning on attacking next turn? And Patrick oh, says, bolt. totally. <laughs> and uh, that's enough to get the scoop. So we're going to get a game three here. And Sam Party is lamenting that lightning bolt, and uh, Dickmont, he knows yep. that that was very fortunate. Absolutely. All right, so we've got a whole lot of action down here in the feature match area. We have Dominic Prozac versus Chris Finnell. They're going to game three. We have Frank Karsten. He's up a game over uh, Li Shi Tian in the side table. You can see all of our tables are active here. All right, let's take a look at Finnell versus Dominic Prozac. Now, Dominic is playing a deck we haven't seen yet in the feature match area that I know of, which is the Burn deck. Burn, it looks like burn. it's got white and black to complement the normal suite of red cards. So you get a Boros Charm, you get Bump in the Night. Yeah, and uh, so a lot of the versions play Lightning Helix, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the fact is there's a lot of good burn in the modern format, and it's a format defined by cracking Zendikar Sack Lands mm -hmm. to go get Ravnica Dual Lands. Mm -hmm. So in a format where people are doing a lot of damage to themselves, suddenly burn becomes a, a pretty yeah. attractive option. That's right. Dealing 15 is easier than dealing 20. <laughs> that's, what, that's your story? <laughs> that is how counting uh, works, yes. That's why we're here to comment, I guess. But... Right, yeah, so I mean, Fennel looks like he's got a tough decision with a Serum Vision. Yeah. He, he does have a Pyromancer Ascension, and it's already got one counter on it from out. that Serum Vision. We see the wow, he, white bordered island <laughs> being tapped. Yeah, he, um, he looks like he's really got a tough spot. I mean, I don't have a lot of information about his hand, so I can't comment on it, but he, he actually had it set to go mm -hmm. top-bottom and said, no, nah, I got to, hold on a second, I got to look at this. 
Well, that's one of the things about modern. You know, you look at a lot of these deck lists, especially if you haven't played a lot of eternal formats, and you're like, okay, well, Serum Visions, what's so great? Thought Scour, what's so great? <laughs> Slide of Hand. But the entire game can be won or lost depending on whether you put that card on the top or on the bottom. It's you know? huge. Thought Scour floating around in the list changes that completely, too. Yeah, it's... That deck is really tough to play. That's yeah. why John Finkel loves it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you, sometimes you're like, do I want to draw this or do I want to mill it mm -hmm. off of, you know, like something like Past in Flames or when you're setting up a Pyromancer Ascension? I mean, you That's just have right. a lot of options. All right, here's Boros Charm for Prosec. On end step, he's going to untap. He finds a Goblin Guide off the top. It's so weird. <laughs> like, giving you a whole turn is better than me taking two. <laughs> like me taking two damage is worse than giving you an entire turn. Like, like it's, it's insane. Well, yep. All right, bump in the night, target spells. you, and four spikes. So that's six damage this turn combined with the four from end step. Lava spike. Uh, excuse me, lava spike, and that put it down. So he's taken huge amounts of damage here. That was ten. And, I mean, Prosec still has a lot of cards in his hand. I mean, Fennel's going to have to put something together fast. And of course, yeah. getting a live Pyromancer Ascension is a that really helps. powerful way to do that. I mean, does he need to go off right now? Like, we don't have exact life totals, but he just took 10. I think he's at 6 right now. I would go off this turn if I was Chris. <laughs> you're not, I, you're not I'm risking just it. saying. <laughs> okay. He's, he's at, at five. 5, we're told, right now. You can't count on getting another turn. You have to assume that every spell is about three damage, right. maybe more. And, uh, you know, Prosec, when he draws, is going to have four cards in his hand, so. All right, looks like uh, Sean McLaren ultimated a Johnny Vengeant versus his stuck-on-three-land opponent, Tim Rivera, Jeez. to win the match two Man. games to one. We could have worse feature matches than those decided by Planeswalker <laughs> Ultimates. Yes, it's in modern, awesome. no less. In modern, yeah. yeah. So we're going to hang out here, or are we going to go So back I think to maybe we should go back. It looks like um, Patrick Dickmine is looking at his opener, and I think they're just about ready to go. Uh, why don't we head back over to our main feature match here, uh, and we'll keep tabs on what's going on with Fennel versus Prozac there. I think that that one is going to be, it's going to end that turn, or it's not. You know, there's a good chance of that. So we're going to know uh, pretty shortly the result of that match. Let's head back over, though, for Birthing Pod versus Tarma Twin. <laughs> Tarma Twin? Yeah. Copyright, Marshall Sutton. No, no, I didn't come up with that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to me Birds of Paradise still just a format staple after being printed in alpha. Yeah. You know. All right, so Calm. here we go. Gitaxian Probe's going to reveal Path to Exile, a second Birds of Paradise, a Noble Hierarch, and a Kasali Pride Mage, along with a land. I'm at 18, sorry. Yep, you're at 18. And Dickmon's at 18. It's not the only alpha card floating around here. Oh, forest. True. Forest. <laughs> Some lightning bolts. Sure. All right, so. It looks like Lee Shi Tian and Frank Karsten are going to game three. Well, Batter Skull got it done? Yep. Wow. Okay. I thought Karsten's board looked all right in that game. Yeah, me too. It's amazing what kind of work Batter Skull does. Like, good yeah. against aggro, good against control, doesn't ever die. All right, so Sam Party drops to 18 to get that Noble Hierarch to complement his Voice of Resurgence here. It's a pretty solid start. It is, just a, a solid mana creature, creature start voice, here, right? Another mana creature. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and again, these are the draws the pod deck gets. Like, Kasali Prime Age Pass has got some disruption, has mana acceleration, has a reasonable clock. I mean, you know, the, the deck can play out totally sure. differently depending on its hmm. a given hand. Now, this is interesting. Patrick Diekman actually had a Tarmogoyf in hand, but he's played Snapcaster Mage to flashback Gitaxian Probe. Do you think he, the blood's in the water, he thinks that he can, he can go for his combo as quickly as possible here? What do you think, Zach? Like, what's he, he can either play a Goyf that turn, or he can play Snapcaster and flashback a Taxian Probe. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he did that because he needs to draw lands. He's just trying to hit his land drops. Yeah, he's got a Splinter Twin. He's got Anger of the Gods, uh, which he wants to cast, I think. Oh, he absolutely does. That takes care of the entire board, board state of his opponent, even the voice. Yeah, and he doesn't want to throw out Tarmogoyf because it would actually die to Anger. Uh, I see. Given that no one's actually used a Sack Land, which is highly unusual. All right, so I'm being told we're going to restart our stream really quickly. We're having a few issues with the video. It should take under a minute. We're going to do wow. it. 
Wow, Anger of the Gods. And there's Anger of the Gods. When we come back, we'll get some exciting conclusions here from Pro Tour Born of the Gods. Stick with us. going as if it were live uh, that way when it comes back up we're already in stride and we're going here so huge anger of the gods for Patrick Dickmine and as you guys mentioned mm -hmm. now the goif gets to come down now those creatures were exiled so they're not going to count but still and, but goif. The exile also means the voice of resurgence didn't leave the token behind. yes right Exactly, which which is huge when you're trying to clock Definitely. with a Goyf. We see both Splinter, uh, Splinter Twin and Pestermite in Dickmon's hand. Really? The question is just, can he cast both of them? Can he get four mana uh, before Party is able to recover? Declare attacks. Yeah. Declare attacks for Patrick. <laughs> Thinking about it, actually. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> he, he, you know, he seemed like, well, I'm going to attack, but now well, how he's actually it? rethinking it here. Yeah, it is sorcery in the graveyard. It looks like at least, no, nah, yeah, it might just be sorcery. Uh, he's got lightning so bolt in his hand, two? and he has pester might. He can bolt a creature in okay. response. So I think he's, you know, trying to hope party blocks or, you know, right, right. something. Yeah. So party something said adorable. no blocks. Yeah. He, he bolts the bird. Gonna, pa party can see through that. Yeah. Don't <laughs> attack a one-two Tarmogoyf <laughs> into kitchen finks unless you have a trick. Right, guys, I didn't right. notice. Now, there's a scavenging news there for Patrick Dickmon. So he's got a solid little board state there, and... Path to Exile for Sam Party is the only relevant card in his hand. He plays a land. He's going to attack with Kitchen Finks here. It's pretty relevant, though, given it that is. Uh, Dickman has the whole combo. Mm -hmm. Question yeah. is whether Tarmogoyf is going to eat the Path of the Exile. I mean, this is, this is the beauty of Dickman's design, right? That Tarmogoyf may be pressure enough that Party right. is forced to path it. And you know what that does? That clears a path for the combo. That's right. Now, it's interesting here uh, on Although Sam Party's no side because he does right. have a Gavany Township, which is active as well. Yeah, and, and I would expect him to be using that. I mean, it's actually probably kind of good for Patrick that the Finx didn't block or it would just get <laughs> reset right here. All right, here's Flame Slash, but in response... Path to Exile is going to kill yeah, Scavenging yeah, News. And that's so Kitchen Finks can come back. That's yep. right, because he was going to activate his Scavenging News, and he gets kind of burned there as he uses an entire Flame Slash for only half of a Kitchen Finks. So Sam Pardee scraping back here, staying in it. He did force the path, and now Sam Pardee is empty-handed. Yeah, that's I, true. I completely I don't, agree. I don't think Dickman's upset with this. I mean, okay. it, it wasn't the best-case scenario. I mean, Pardee did have mm -hmm. something, but... Party doesn't have anything now. Yep. He's got no cards in hand. Looking at Dickmon's hand, it looks like you took like about the four or five most popular modern decks <laughs> and just like shuffled them together <laughs> and dealt out seven cards. You got like Batter Skull from like the sideboard of, you know, blue, white, red. You've got lightning bolts. You've got twins. You have goifs on the board. You Scam know what else that Path of Exile did, by the way, is it gave Dickman the fourth land he was having trouble finding. Yeah, yeah. That, that's actually huge. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, and he, Dickmon missed several land drops. Yes. So, I mean, Party had to have known that that land was at yeah, least relevant. Yeah, but you can't just let him flame slash your, your Kitchen Finks. Oh, for sure. No, I completely agree. The Kitchen Finks is really all that Party has going for him yeah, right but now. But you just, I mean, this, the synergies in Dickman's design are awesome. Now, it's he's got a Batter beautiful. Skull in hand, and he's drawn a land for the turn, too. It's a Steam Vents. He can play that and play Batter Skull if he wants, or he can try to set up the win for next yeah, turn. Yeah, I would be thinking combo kill here. All right, some applause as a match yeah. has ended. We'll get that one updated as quickly. Okay, All right, Finnell. that's Chris Finnell winning 2-1 to one over Dominic Prozek and virtually locking up a top yeah. eight for him. Looks like a storm deck. Cards. Yep, storm deck in. Yeah, Steam Vents tapped. It's still amazing to me. I mean, Dickmon's design, you can just tell that he has so much passion for this deck. Because, yes. like, you don't accidentally get to putting two <laughs> scavenging ooze in your Splinter Twin Yeah, it's deck. funny. I talked to him, and he'd been meaning to do a Tarmogoyf version of the Twin deck for a while. Oh, yeah? And he almost did it for Grand Prix Prague, but he figured, no, I should save it for the Pro Tour. <laughs> well, yeah, he said he didn't even want to play it on the online very much to, to keep his tech secret. Well, he also needed to track down Tarmogoyfs on Magic Online. <laughs> <laughs> That's a scavenging news, I guess, from Party's side, which yep. uh, can finally give him a meaningful oh, clock. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, Dickmon's so hand is just loaded. Yeah. I mean, he, that can slow down the Tarmogoyf, but I think Dickman goes for the combo kill here. Yeah. I mean, Party is at two draw phases. All right, so what happens here is Patrick Dickman says, I'm going to exile your creature, but Sam Pardee immediately responds. He does have one white mana available, though, and also a Birds of Paradise. 
basically Dickman is saying, did you draw abrupt decay in the last two turns? That's exactly if what he's saying. You're dead. And he's going to exile taps. the lightning bolt. Yeah. So that's going to put Patrick now Dumont in position here. Okay, mana. Yeah. There's not, but there is Path to Exile mana, but there's Patrick oh, Dumont. And he oh, has man. it. Sorry? He yeah, does have it. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I, uh, wow. I mean, I, sh I went too fast, too. Yeah. It's my fault. I should have asked first. Uh, anyway. That is a huge wow. path to so exile. Wow, so Path to Exile was the last card in Sam Party's hand, and it hits the Pestermite. So Dickmon has to regroup here. No, he still has a Tarmogoyf. He still has a Scavenging Ooze onto the battlefield, but it's not going to be that easy. No, I, and Sam's Scavenging Ooze is getting bigger faster. It is. It's turning off the Tarmogoyf. And I, I wow. do love I do love Dickman using his scavenging ooze to try and to get, get Sam to yeah. use yeah. the scavenging ooze yeah, like yeah, yeah, a Rashadden yeah. port thing. But, but oh, man, but Sam was path. only too happy to do it. Oh yeah, and yeah. now the ooze is bigger and can start attacking. I mean, wow. it, you know, or it can at least get ready to start attacking. What a sick sequence down the line here, and we are still completely unsure who's going to win this game. Well, and, and, and let's, I mean, that was a huge path to exile, but the Electrolyze in Patrick's hand is a going to be a beating when it resolves. It's going to take uh, out both Kitchen Finks and the, the Birds of Paradise. Yeah, unless Gavany Township happens right now, but uh, yeah. also a Batter Skull there for Patrick, too, which is just <laughs> not going to be... Yeah, you know, at the end of the day here, there's no Birthing Pods and there's no Splinter Twins on the table, so this is going to be a fair creature fight, it looks like, <laughs> and uh, I'll take the one with the Birthing Pod if, if that's, or excuse me, with the uh, Batter Skull, if that's what we're going to be fighting here. Yeah. No blocks? Oh. Is, uh, usually you think of Batter Skull as a 4-4, four -four, okay. but if that thing attaches to a Tarmogoyf, that is a <laughs> lot of life points. That's right. It also plays, you know, great blocker, great attacker at the same time. So I don't think that, that Patrick has blocked that scavenging news that's attacking here. Though they do seem to be paused. Yeah, I mean, like, you've got a Tarmogoyf, but uh, using Tarmogoyf with scavenging news on the battlefield is not the most exciting proposition. All right, so, it so. Was, they were waiting for Sam to decide if he wanted to use ah. it, and he said no, and just played a second scavenging news. So that's going to drop Patrick Dickman down to six, I believe. And now uh, Gavany Township tapped, so Electrolyze free to take out two creatures if that's mm -hmm. what Patrick wants to do. Also gets a Kitchen Finks off the board to disrupt the infinite life combo, mm -hmm. which obligates Patrick to win with the Splinter Twin combo and not with either Ooze or Tarmogoyf. Electrolyze. One, one. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, one, one. Both of those go down. Yeah. Patrick gets to draw a card here. That dice is not meaning anything, so it's two scavenging nooses versus another scavenging news and a Tarmogoyf. There's three untapped mana here for Patrick Dickman. Green floating for Sam. And uh, Right, and the green floating actually really relevant when you're trying to win, like, scavenging news opposition, right. which is what we're in right now. <laughs> All right, so Sam, he's going to use his green mana to exile the Birds of Paradise here with that scavenging news. Now, that's, that's the one that doesn't have any counters on it currently, and Patrick's deciding uh, if he wants to respond. I mean, he's got a green mana of his own. Okay, but only one. Mm -hmm. I go to and Patrick says, okay. So that puts Sam Party back up to 16 and leaves two 3-3s. Three you're in your beginning of combat step, you have, yes. and you have priority. And so we're right now in the beginning of um, Patrick Dickman's combat step, and Patrick has priority. So what does he want to do here? Yeah, and, and he could have tapped the forest to obligate Sam to tap another forest, but mm -hmm. he wants to be able to represent three mana, given that he has four cards in his hand. We're seeing him check the graveyard. You know, it's it's really tricky right here because there's multiple of some card types, only one of others. Mm -hmm. So the interaction between Scavenging Ooze and Tarmogoyf is just a lot to process. Yes. Especially since Scavenging Ooze can get bigger while it makes Tarmogoyf smaller like we were talking about. So yeah. the last thing you want to do in a situation like this is throw away a Tarmogoyf because you didn't bother to count the graveyard accurately. That's right. All right, so Sam Party says, I'll exile my Kitchen Finks. Patrick says, in response, I'll do it. And then Sam says, well, I've got one more green mana, and I'll be the one that does it, making his ooze a 4-4 and pumping him up to 17 life total now. This is incredible. This, this game is going to come down to who, who uses their ooze better, you know? Yeah. I mean, who has more green mana available? In this case, it's Sam Party. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's easy to forget, but Patrick's at six. Yeah. So like, yeah. Patrick is under a lot of Very pressure real. right this now. This is a potentially lethal attack. 
I don't know if there's double any other creatures actually one. in the yard. It looks like Patrick's uh, going to double block here. I was take double block the smaller uh, one. Hold a second. <laughs> he says, wait double a second. Block. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. let me so verify. Three, right? Yep. Okay, I double block it. Okay. Yeah, I don't but think Sam can get it to zero, so. It's yeah. first, the second. Okay. Uh, damage is fine. All, All right. right. You're right, yeah, so. Two. Okay. That's fine. Dickman down Patrick Dickman drops down to two. What's the follow-up play for party? Is it going to be start munching here, or does he actually have a card he can cast? No, it's a land. Yeah, I, I he mean... He doesn't it, particularly need to munch because there's no scavenging moves left on Dickman's board. Right, and I think I he mean, wants he, to leave. He, he, he can shrink the goy for something, but he's at 17. Yeah. He doesn't okay, really right. care, right? He does go ahead and eat yeah, it, you might as well do it while Dickman is tapped out. That way you don't give him the option of fighting over it with his breeding pool and forest on the off chance that that winds up mattering. I okay. mean, you just, you know, why give your opponent options? Right, he's out of cards anyway. It's mm -hmm. not like Sam Party can represent anything here. All right, there's a Flame Slash, but I think that the Ooze is a 5-5 five five <laughs> yeah, just out of range skull. here, so it's going to be Batter Skull instead. I mean, and, and, and to be fair, I mean, like, Party's last yeah. turn was really good. This is a huge batter skull yes. right yeah, here. This is I mean, this, this matters a lot. Oh, thank you very much. You know, it can turn. block the scavenging moves for a turn, get on Tarmogoyf, start attacking back. Vigilance really powerful. The graveyard's going to be exhausted soon, so. That, that ooze is exiled already. You exiled right in your turn. Didn't you? No, I exiled oh, of, of course, of course. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> They're just <laughs> making sure that they, yeah. which ooze uh, is which here. There's a lot of scavenging oozes flying around the battlefield here. Okay. And Sam Party's gonna to work on go to work the on the growth. Yeah, he's gonna try to make it so that the goyf at okay. with the eventually will only yeah. be a four. Get it down to, he can get it to one two pretty easy, but there's a lot mm -hmm. of instants floating around. Sorry. Okay, that's yeah, fine. That's fine. Yeah, and uh, I mean you know it, it's <laughs> every decision matters so yeah, I mean, much. He attacks in here, right? Like I can. Uh, I think so. He doesn't get beaten up in combat because he can get the goyf down. He can easily get it to a one two, right? I mean, the Goyf isn't going to fight the Ooze, yeah. yeah. And I like blocking with Churn here, because you can block with later, so it basically gives you four free yep. life points, get some breathing room. Yep. Your turn. And yeah, it's going to take some work to get Tarmogoyf down to literally zero. Mm -hmm. so. Right. But we, we also, though, you know, Scavenging News might not have anything else to eat, but he does have a township there that's active, yeah. so he's going to get a counter on that thing either way. Oh, absolutely. Is that a Crypto oh, Command? Oh, wow. Wow. Crypto Command can bounce that ooze to reset it. He can also just <laughs> clear the way. He's got a lot of options with a Cryptic here. <laughs> of course Cryptic is in this deck, too. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. Why would it not be? Tarmogoyf? Yeah. yeah. Attack? Equip Goyf. Electrolyze to start. Okay. Now, relatively, doesn't have enough mana to equip and leave you open Cryptic. Right? Yes, he does not. And you gain five up to 11. But, it, it, but the uh, Tarmogoyf was still a 1 2, plus the Batter Skull bonus means that yep. he's going to gain five, go back up to 11 here. I mean, pretty big difference between 2 and 11. Yes. <laughs> it's kind Unbelievable. Of wow. Batter Skull taking over. I thought Pardee had topped his way into this win with the Path to Exile to break up the twin combo. I did too. And now Dickman is just. Thank you. No, no, I'm fine. I've got a batter skull. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he's up to 11. He's going to fall back down to at least five, potentially more than that. But untapping with Cryptic, Batter Skull, mm -hmm. and Tarmogoyf. Cryptic three. able to reset the and scavenging ooze at cards. minimum. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is a, this is yeah, a great Party game of magic. To, Party needs to top deck something. Yeah, he does. And, and to be fair, he and hasn't he to do really right drawn now. a lot. Yeah, you know, he's drawn a lot of fair mid-range creatures. Has that really path, drawn he, he's kind of up on <laughs> luck draws this game. <laughs> that path was mind-blowing. <laughs> Dickman, Randy he had no spoken. cards in hand. <laughs> I mean, from no cards in hand, yeah. Dickman was like, oh, cool, the coast is clear for my combo. What? Yeah. <laughs> right, and tapped and he, you out of Abrupt Decay. And he, yeah, he tapped him out of Abrupt Decay as well. A murderous red cap oh, diff, okay. if nothing else, will buy some time right here. It can block at least twice and uh, stays in play to try to slowly assemble the Malera combo. That's what Sam drew. He drew yeah, a Sam drew murderous red cap. Okay, right there. and he can sneak that through the uh, cryptic command here as well. As Patrick yeah, only has three mana eight. left. And, and actually, if uh, yeah, it, it, I'm assuming that uh, yeah, right. He can sneak it through the cryptic, and if he chumps and resets with Gavany Township, theoretically the red cap can, oh, block, can block forever. forever. Can. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Good point. Wow. This game. Yeah, Gavany Township <laughs> means that red cap can just block forever. Now, who does that favor? 
Well, <laughs> the life link cool. means that Dickman yeah. keeps going up and right. up and up and up. It so kinda, if this game goes really long, who wins? I think it favors Dickman. The, the first one to get their combo? I mean, they can both deal arbitrarily large amounts of damage, right. yeah. <laughs> which is insane. Uh, I think a lot of it is, like, Dickman's gone through at least one Splinter Twin. I right. would have to draw it. But Party's combo requires him to assemble more pieces. Yeah, I, I don't know what the answer to that question is. Another update from our side table. Li Shi Tian with his blue moon list has defeated um, Frank Karsten yeah. and Affinity. So two of our matches yeah. are already yeah. finished in the feature match area here. You see with uh, Dickmon, uh, I think three of them. Party decided not to attack. It would be sure. huge for Dickmon here if he could um, set up Flame Slash on the, uh, on the scavenging damage. ooze. Yeah, this is our last match. Okay. Damage. Okay, I gain uh, five, and then you take one, so you go to 13. So I'll red cap shoot you. Okay. Um, <laughs> flame plus the red cap. Flame slash wow. the red oh, cap. Not first, okay. That turned uh, off Gavini Township. Uh, Killed it before the plus one, plus one counter could annihilate with launch. the minus one, minus one counter. He sure did. Now, scavenging is still doing work on the graveyard, but not actually play affecting fast. things still. I to play fast as well, no, sorry. Yeah, it's a hands game. It is very close. And, and this is, yeah, I mean, we, I think we've arrived at a turning point now. We've got Cryptic, only one card in Party's hand, and Equip Batter Skull, pretty easy to reset the, uh, the ooze now if he wants to. Right. And uh, oh. can also just wait and see what the spell is. But uh, playing very disciplined and, yeah, and he chooses doesn't wanna, not to. He doesn't want to use the Cryptic Goyf. just as an unsolved. Resolves. Sure. All right, he finds his second Goyf and just passes a turn back. So yeah, these yeah. Goyfs are going to be 0-1s. Soon. Soon. Okay. So I have 13 off. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. You want to wait till you can get a straight two-for-one with uh, Cryptic or, or card plus bounce as opposed to a random draw from your deck. Now, I is guess. Sam Party keeping that Path to Exile in his yard in case he draws a uh, Eternal, Witness? Eternal Witness? Is that what that's about? Seems that smart. Makes sense. That's, that seems like a good play. I didn't see it. No, but I, <laughs> I saw that he declined last turn. I had uh -huh. figured out why. Marshall solved uh, the puzzle for us. Scavenging it's good to have three people. All right, so here. players have three yeah. minutes left. Okay, okay now he's match. just decided unsummon is good enough. <laughs> he might have, yeah. I guess it's repulse. Yeah, it's, it's Repulse, and he's got Draw. two Tarmogoyfs now, so he can build yeah. a graveyard and get a meaningful swing in, I think. I or think at least he found possibly. a scavenging news of his own yeah. as well. Ah. Party's at Ooh. 13. Attack. Yeah. Drawing six. Dismember here is huge because that means that Goy uh, Seven, Scavenging Goose dies next turn, mm -hmm. unable to keep working on the graveyard, and puts a creature in the bed. Yeah, only, oh, one, yeah, only one of the Tarmac Goose has vision. Yeah, you can tell how nervous Dickmon is. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and they've sure. been talking about it. They said that he, you know, they keep apologizing, mm -hmm. saying, look, it's, it's really oh. tense. And there's the Scavenging News, so Patrick Dickmon moving very close here. Sam Pardee up against it. There's the scavenging news. We knew that was coming back. Yeah, this what one else is, is he This one is flame slashable, though. Yes. Uh -huh. And dismemberable for the uh, dismember. Yep. And oh, there's a thanks. kitchen fix as oh, well, though. Oh, man. So you're at nine? So that puts Sam Pardee back up to nine life. What a crazy game. What an it's insane epic game, game we have here. Mind blowing game. Kitchen things. He's going to hit the kitchen things here and yeah. then yeah. ooze it. The I exile it. Yep. Right. Well played. Oh, sorry, it's just one. It's okay. Like and uh, party yeah. uh, electing not to exile, not, presumably not to, to keep up uh, abrupt decay mana. I guess essentially. so. I don't, he I'm also sure. couldn't have won that fight yeah. and maybe just decided sure. not. Yeah, yeah. That's actually yeah. probably the real step. reason. Yeah. Declare attacks. Mm -hmm. All right, here they come. A 3-3, three, three, a couple of goifs, one of them with a, on a batter skull. Sam Party uh, at nine life. I'll take eight. He's going to take one. eight wow. and drop to one here. Okay. I'm back to uh, 20. Yes. Patrick Digmont back to his original so. life total of 20, passes the turn. Is there anything that Sam Party can draw here? There no. isn't, and Patrick Digmont is the Jeez. winner in this match. A tough, hard-fought battle I mean, from both really players not. there, yeah. and Patrick Digmont is a champion. You see him, could not be happier there. Sam Pardee oh, taking yes. it like a champ. Very well played. He, Thank you. you can hear him. He just said, very well played. Yeah. It's very well played by both players. That's yeah. a tough yeah, that's loss to take. Wow. Okay. Ooh. 
That was some exciting wow. stuff. That Welcome back stuff. to the booth, guys. That was great stuff. That's Zach Hill, <laughs> Randy Bueller, I'm Marshall Sutcliffe, and wow, yes. a lot of stuff going on there. That path to exile, you know, I was with you, Randy. I thought, when they saw that, I thought, how does Dickmon recover from that? Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> it's just the only thing he could have. It's not like he even top decked his way out of it. He's just mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, I have plan C. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's how he recovers, plan C. And interestingly, right. it was creatures. He just, he played value creatures yeah. and ended up winning. Well, and again, Crazy. I mean, it's not just intuitive that you go and put Batter Skull in your Splinter Twin deck. Right. Yeah. You know, but he had it, he had it, and it was there for a reason. It did the work that it was supposed to do. I mean, this is, I've watched a lot of matches yeah. here at the Pro Tour. I know both of you guys have, too. That is one of the best matches I can remember in terms of just the crazy back and forth. I, I mean, agree. it was an epic match. Yeah, I agree. And, and also the intensity. I mean, yeah. we got that shot of Patrick, and you could just see it on his face how much stress he was feeling, you know, all the pressure he was putting on yeah. himself. You mentioned it. You know, here's Gataxian Probe, and he's like, okay, now I got to do this right <laughs> for the rest of the way. And he did find a way to get the victory. He is going to, I mean, we're thinking he's top eight, right? Yeah, I think yeah. he's in. I think so he that, just that, needs to draw. that looked like a win, and and he can probably get a draw out of the deal too. Um, yeah, and I guess Lishi Tian won, so he's going to he, get paired down. I think is how this is going to work yeah, out. Yeah, because he was on thirty-two points right. coming in versus Frank Carson, who was on thirty. Or maybe somebody is going to get paired against Lishi Tian and then not get the draw. Okay, because wow. because he'll have to play. Wow. I think that's how this plays and out, and that makes it interesting for us in the booth here for sure. Now, Sean McLaren did find the victory versus uh, Tim Rivera as okay. well. Oh, so, so he's in. He's in because he was on 34 points. Yeah, so he's in. on 37. So we have three yeah, people man. at 37 already, one of whom is going to get pared down. Mm -hmm. and, and that guy doesn't need a draw. That guy is probably going to play for the one seed. Wow. And then Chris Finnell as well. He defeats Dominic Prozek of the Czech Republic sure. to put him into the top eight. Well, with a draw. Of, with a draw. Right. Okay. So I mean, you've if got he's this thing where, so, you know, all the 36s are mm -hmm. in with a draw. I mean, th somebody's going to make it in at 36. Okay. At least one person. So 37 is golden. If you mm -hmm. can get to 37, you're rock solid 100% cinch. Right now, that is Christian Seibold, Jacob Wilson, and you said Sean McLaren won his match. Mm -hmm. So we've got three people that are rock solid golden in. The people who got to 36 either need a draw or, hypothetically, they could be forced to play lose and still maybe get in as the guy on four losses. Right. So who got to 36, you said? Uh, Dickman, we just all got got to 36. That's right. His tiebreakers are also gorgeous, so mm -hmm. he, he should even if, even if he lost, he would probably be the X4 that got in. Now, Li Shi Tian got to 35. Yeah, he is the double draw, uh -huh. so he he has to win. He has yeah. to win. He exactly. Cannot, he draws not good enough for him. He'll have to win. But if he wins, he is in. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Alright, so let's send it back to the news desk. We've got Rich Hagen over there. He's going to give you updates when we come back. All three of us are going to be bringing you the final round of Swiss here from Pro Tour Born of the Gods, don't you go anywhere. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the news desk. Thanks to the guys in the booth. It's murder trying to keep track of everything down there. They were trying to call the matches as well. We just went with the pen and paper system back here at the news desk. Let's not deal with ifs, ands, and buts. Let's just go with certainties. And the only certainties I can give you are these. Christian Sable, 37 points, will be in the top eight. Jacob Wilson, 37 points, will be in the top eight. And Sean McLaren of Canada, 37 points, will be in the top eight. Everything the guy said in the booth is true. Anyone on 36 already, if they can get a draw in the last round, are certainly in. As Randy says, 37 points, you're golden. So 36 right now, Ansi Alkio of Finland, Chris Fennell of the United States, Patrick Dickman of Germany. But that's if they get paired against someone who will also get one point and be happy with it. So that's 36. 35 points, Li Shi Chan. Well, he has to play and win. And then all the 33s, they're going to sit around just waiting to see, can they win and their tie breaks hold up? You could see one 36 in the top eight. You could see two. And maybe those 37s just decide, depending how they get paired, let's play Dream Crush. We'll know a lot more when we get the full standings, which the players will be getting soon, and the pairings for that final round. So while we wait for those, one last deck tech. From Malaysia, a man who's here at his first PT, played a handful of GPs, amazing record, two top eights, a Grand Prix trophy already. He's 10 and 5 right now, 3 and 0 his draft pod this morning. Over at the video, we're waiting patiently for us, Brian David Marshall. And from Malaysia, Raymond Tan.